Woohoo! Well, good morning, Codger Biker here, and I'm on the way to the MOT station. Whoa! With my freshly built engine, and uh, I've checked everything over, everything's legal as far as I'm concerned, but you never know when it comes to uh, the day. Six volt electrics can pack up at any moment. They never were brilliant, particularly indicators. Of course, I'm supposed to be running it in, so I can't really uh, give it too much. But it doesn't really like to go uh, below 3000 rows, which is its power zone, so... Uh, power band, sorry. So, I'm stuck behind a learner driver here, but never mind. I've put some tape on the headlight so that the guys at the garage can see the headlight uh, ignition positions. Uh, yeah, we really haven't got much power. <laughs> you have the throttle, you get a bit more noise, and that's about it. But as I say, got to keep the revs down. Indicating left. Will it work? Don't know where this learner's going. Give it some lean. Stupid to have the indicator on the right hand side because I have to turn my indicators off with my right hand. Okay, I've got a car coming up behind me fast, bogging down in fourth. First time on the road since the engine rebuild. Third gear. Yeah, it really doesn't like being below 4,000 revs, but uh, yeah, the best I can do. Anyway, let's go down the road, see if we can pass an MOT, and then we'll go from there. We'll do a steady 40 miles an hour. It's raining, of course. Um, that is fourth gear. We've only that's all four of them. We have four gears only. That's uh, you know, it's quite a comfortable ride. Just a very different soundtrack. Now, have you ever seen anybody who's come back to motorbikes from the 80s or 90s that used to ride two strokes? You can tell them straight away by the way that when they come to a stop, they're blipping the throttle all the time, which is what you have to do or you had to do on a two stroke. Of course, nowadays with modern four stroke engines and uh, fuel injection and all the rest of it, you don't have to worry about any of that. No air temperature, no digital clock to tell me the time. My MOT's at 11 o'clock. Am I early? Am I late? Who knows? So, once you get to the light with the two stroke, oh, flip in the throttle to keep it going. Which is, when you come back to riding, you see a lot of people doing that with the four stroke. Two strokes don't really like ticking over. Anyway, we got here. That's the main thing. Just don't want it to stall at the light. Of course, if you stall one of these, you've got to get off and kickstart it, which is embarrassing. Oh, I've conked out! <laughs> I've conked out! Oh. 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 I've had to go! Oh. <laughs> To say the least. Still. Right, let's go to the MOT. I'll get back with you when I've done. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Last one. Bike's 40 years old. So, doesn't really need one, but uh, yeah. Got to take it in anyway. Hola, buenos dias. Adios, adios, adios. Got a list. Now in the UK, if your vehicle is under 40 years old, you have to have what's called a Ministry of Transport test. If it's over 40 years old, they don't care. 
which seems a bit mental to me because you think the older the vehicle then the more likely it was to be dangerous but that's not how it works now old T.S. Eliot the camel here is 40 years old this year so this will be his last statutory MOT in fact I could wait a few weeks and he wouldn't need it at all but I thought I will do one last MOT on it now since the last time he passed he's done about 100 miles so really there shouldn't be anything to do however um, I've made a list I'm going to check over everything and uh, we'll see what happens now one thing I do know it would fail on instantly is six volt indicators and the six volt indicators have always been rubbish I used to take them off when I used to take my bikes from OT so for instance that's supposed to be indicating left you can see it's barely flashing the front's okay so generally it's a dirty connection or a bad earth. Now I did convert this to a six volt LED bulb. That is so much better. Yeah. There's one problem though. What's that? Let me show you. So if I cancel the indicators and listen. <laughs> <laughs> They've stopped. But yeah, they stopped, yeah. <laughs> All right, and I can put them back on. There's, there's the other side. All right. That's the other side yeah, yeah. on the back, if you look. Right. So you can see they are definitely working. Yeah. Nice and right and very precise, aren't they, the way they go on and off. Look at that. Unfortunately, the relay keeps going constantly. For now, I'm putting this bike back um, totally OEM. OEM. Um, so it's got ordinary ignition, the old coil ignition. I've done nothing about that. It's got uh, the only thing that's really changed on this bike from when I had it on the road in the 1980s or 1984 when I first had it is I had to put a new exhaust on it because uh, my mate Sean blew it up. And uh, if you've seen the videos, the engine's been completely rebuilt. So while that was going on, this bike's been sawn. So it's still sawn. I don't know how you unsawn something, but on this Thursday, I've insured it. So whether that automatically unsawns it or I have to do something, I don't know. Uh, I can't remember what sawn means, but it's what you have to do in Britain if you say your vehicle is off the road, you have to register it as such, or it could be taken away and crushed or whatever. I don't know. So my list is the chain. Now it's got a brand new chain, brand new chain cover, everything on it, but I will just check it for slack. Difficult to do this because it has a uh, gaiters completely over the chains, completely uh, sealed system. Short of having a shaft drive, that's about as good as you can get. So really the chain should be fine. Uh, but I need, do need to check the wheel alignment because I took the wheel out. Um, or I moved it forward to get the chain on when I changed the engine. So I will check the wheel alignment. Next up, the horn. We've got the horn. We've got the horn. He also was on about levers, checking that they're not too worn. Um... Now with the MZ ones, you can actually tighten it up here. So they've got to work, but they've also not got to be too worn. Uh, battery, I'll charge that. Fuel, ready to go. Lights. Now, again, I've got LED bulbs, but as I say, there is some discrepancy over what counts as a, a legal light. So I've gone back to the incandescent six volt job, which I think turns on there. You see that? And uh, main beam and dip. And I'm just using the garage wall over there to make sure that it's below horizontal on both. Which is exactly where it was the last time it passed. I haven't touched it, so hopefully that should be okay. Front brake uh, seems to be okay. Lots of adjustment. I put brand new, it's had new shoes in it and completely rebuilt a couple of years ago, 100 miles ago. That seems to be okay. The rear brake I do know needs adjusting slightly because part of changing the engine was that I had to uh, slacken that off. So I might just give that a little bit more. Uh, on the MZ you adjust that here at the back. It's very crude. There's a cable goes into there. You wind that out and then cover it over with rubber. Now I have got LED bulbs for every part of the bike which I could put in and they're so much brighter they take very little current and are much better than the uh, incandescent jobs but as I say for this 
for this uh, MOT, for its last one, I've got it back to stock. The bike is as stock as it could be, given the parts that uh, had to be replaced. So £30, that's how much it cost to get MOT, I think. One mad thing about this bike, I don't know what the Germans were thinking, but they put the indicators where the throttle is. So when you're riding along, if you want to use the indicators, you have to use it with your throttle hand. You can see that it does flash there. Very difficult to do. So I intend to reach over with my other hand. And then you have to remember that down is left and up is right. Which is not obvious because you'd think up would be left, but it isn't. Up is right. Because when you, yeah, it's like counter steering, I suppose. If you counter steer that way, you will go to the right. So the indicators are set up for counter steering and also for using your other hand. But we survived. I survived somehow in the 80s. I don't know how. I rode this bike for six years. It's, um, it has no front brake light. If you pull the front brake, there's no switch, no electrics, nothing to make the, um, the brake light work. Nothing happens. Nothing there. There's no connection. Look, nothing. I'm using it. You only get a bike brake light on the back switch and it's a very crude thing which is here inside the as the um, shoes expand it pushes a piece of metal to close the circuit takes that to earth which lights up the back brake very crude Those indicators still dodgy. I'll have to go over them. I might solder all the connections actually. And uh, do that before the MIT. Everything else seems fine. Gotta pump the tyres up. Yeah, 1980s indicators. Gotta love them. I could remove them, I suppose, but um, anyway. I've also got to add a mirror on that side for the road. It's not needed for the MOT, but it is needed before I ride it on the road. So next up, let's fuel it up. Now in the olden days, when I worked at a garage, you used to buy fuel, when this bike was on the road, new, you used to buy fuel in gallons. So you'd go into the garage, you'd buy a gallon, there'd be a two-stroke dispenser by the pumps, and you had to prime it, and then you could set it to say 50 to 1, 25 to 1, whatever, Put the nozzle in the bike and press the lever and dispense it. The only trouble was, if you hadn't primed it, and a lot of, I was 16 when I worked at garage, a lot of kids didn't know this, so you probably send the vehicle out with uh, probably half the oil that it should have had. So um, I never used the dispenser, I always used this. So for every UK gallon, you probably see there there's a mark, you fill this up with two stroke oil, plonk it in and shake the tank it's called premix and uh, i prefer it in two strokes just because you know what you're getting and since this is a newly built engine i shall be using castrol power one two stroke on from now on and um, i'm going to put in a gallon and then a cap of that now you may not know some people don't know most people do i think but that a british gallon is bigger than a us gallon a us gallon is uh, about a fifth less so every british gallon is bigger than the americans why you call that a gallon bore that ain't nothing so a british gallon is 4.54 liters so i'm going to use liters today so 4.54 whatever it was cut them now but i marked it so one full gallon of uh, 5% ethanol, unfortunately. 
So it's possible that the reason this bike blew up is because maybe Sean went and got a gallon of fuel served by somebody who didn't know what they were doing. And um, so if you can see it was a mark inside there, so that's one one measure. It's quite a knack just to throw it in there, you get used to it. Yeah, so you could end up with half the oil or less than you thought you were getting and end up seizing up down the road. Funny enough, that's what I'm to Sean. Whether he just filled up or not, I don't know. But, uh... Anyway, there we go. Now you shake it. A bit of good shake. And that is your premix. So we fueled up. We've adjusted the brakes, we've got the indicators working properly, all the lights are working, I'm going to charge the battery and then next time you see me I'll be on the road. Well the bad news is it's chucking it down with the rain, but the good news is we passed. Well done Elliot the Camel, legal, back on the road. No advisories, everything's fine. And um, last ever MOT. I was just talking to the guy there, and um, I've got LED headlight, tail light, all LEDs to go in. And uh, he said, "Yeah, put them in because uh, the generator on these bikes and a six volt battery is not not really up to running a headlight all the time, which you need for safety. So um, an LED headlight, which I've got, ready to go in, bulb." If it works, means I can run it with the headlight on. Which would be weird because I'd. Uh, <laughs> it's not something I ever did. Saps the power. But uh, I have got my headlight on now. Through we go. MZ Power! Oh, uh, run it in. Yeah, so. All good news, we've passed, or Elliot the Camel has passed his MOT. Now I would filter if I was on my other bike, but I'm not filtering on this. Riding a two-stroke MZ in the rain in city traffic uh, in 2024 is a weird thing to be doing. There's the old revving it up at the lights. As I say, anyone who comes back to motorbikes, they used to ride two strokes, but now rides a modern four, so you often see them revving it. Just like that. And let's go. So, moving through modern traffic. Here we go. Riding me MZ home with a new MOT. Right, so good news is we've got a new MOT, the bike's back on the road legally, I'm insured. Go and get it taxed now and uh, look forward to an adventure on a day when it's not quite so wet. On that note, Codger Biker is out. Running fine though, Elliot, I must say. <laughs>